Okay, hopefully that should work now. That's looking good. Um, okay. So first of all, if you could just tell us a bit about yourself, that'd be great, uh, Roma. Hi, yes. My name is Roma Hooper and I'm the founder and director of Make Justice Work, which was a campaign established three years ago to raise awareness around the cost of short-term prison sentences and how ineffective they are but very importantly, to look at how we could raise the profile and the effectiveness of community sentences as a replacement for short-term prison sentences. And um, do you have in mind which, which crimes these would apply to, or is it um, you've got open mind at the moment? I think largely because we're talking about people who are serving under 12 months. Our main focus has been looking at young people who often get caught up because they're very often the prolific offenders but not necessarily doing you know, what I would call very damaging crime. And I think violence is something you have to take out of this equation. But there are considerable numbers of people, young people, women particularly, um, those with drug and alcohol problems and mental health problems and learning disabilities, who get caught up in what is actually for the public probably the most irritating crimes, because they're the ones that are causing the most amount of damage and harm in the community in terms of shoplifting, stealing, burglaries, mainly often feeding a habit that they, they can't sort of shop. But because they're doing it frequently, they get caught up and end up by serving short-term prison sentences. We believe very strongly that that group can be far better dealt with in the community, not least because it's far less expensive, but actually the most important thing is that what we're looking for is looking at community sentences which can, add, can in fact not just reduce crime, reduce the number of victims, but really turn these people's lives around earlier rather than later. Prison is too late for most of them. Do you think uh, prison can exacerbate the problem then if they're a, a young person or that's the first, first offence maybe? Um... Absolutely. My personal experience, I used to work at Feltham Young Offenders for a long time, and that is really where this campaign kind of emerged, if you like, because I kept seeing these youngsters coming in, out, in, out. Once you're in prison, it makes it much more difficult to turn your life around. And when we launched the campaign three years ago, we did a sort of what I would call a quick and dirty poll uh, with comrades, which asked employers if they would be more reluctant or less reluctant to employ somebody who was either on a community sentence or had served one or someone who served a short prison sentence. Without doubt, they would be much more comfortable taking on someone who'd done a community sentence rather than someone who'd served a short-term prison sentence. So, yes, I think the damage once they go into prison is quite significant. I completely understand that for some people, prison may be the only option even though it's just for a matter of a few months. But really, we should be looking at things far more smartly and far more effectively earlier on to prevent people, magistrates particularly, feeling that they should lock people up, even though just for a short period of time. And uh, with these community sentences, do you think that the community or the victims should be involved in deciding what, what that might involve? Or do you think that's something for judges? Or how do you see that? I think critically, the victim's voice must be heard in the courtroom. And I think that can be done in a whole variety of different ways. We've done a big report this summer with victim support, which actually was very interesting because they feel at the moment that they're left out of the discussion, if you like. Actually, they don't necessarily want to be involved with the sentence. They want to be far better informed early on as to what the processes are, feel that they're being included in, in the engagement, if you like, with the, what the, the offender's going to have to do. Yeah, I think in some cases, if it's on the sort of lower scale, lower end sort of crime in local communities, which would involve, say, community payback, I, I think most victims and most of the public will quite like to be asked, well, okay, what would you like for these people to do whilst they're serving the sentence in terms of what's important in your local area? But I think much more critically, they would rather be involved with knowing what's going on, just to just know what's happening and how that person's getting on with the community sentence. I don't think they need to be involved with deciding what it is at all. But there needs to be far better use of the victim impact statements and far more respect paid to the voice of the victim. I think that could have a really important impact on the offender too, in terms of restorative justice, because that's which we're now going to see coming into play within magistrates' courts 
which is going to be very, very interesting, I think, for the future of how we deal with offenders before they get immersed into long-term criminal activity. Yeah. And in terms of just the wider point about the prisons itself, um, do you think there's an ideal prison population um, below what we, where we are now, or is it a bit more nuanced than that? I think it's a bit more nuanced than that. I think that, you know, in an ideal world, we should only be locking up people in prison that have done very, very unpleasant, nasty crimes. You know, murder, for obviously, for that, for the very obvious reasons. But, you know, there are certain categories of offenders which are, who are dangerous and who you can do very little with, probably in the community. Um, so I think, yes, there is a place for prison. But do you know what? I think the rest of Europe have shown us as is America beginning to show us, that it is unnecessary to lock up great swathes of people who are actually not committing very dangerous offences, who, yes, who are doing damaging things in the community, but actually the real game is to keep them outside where we're all of us, all of us involved in making sure that they keep on the straight and narrow. Lock them up and no one's going to see what happens. You keep them in prison for long periods of time, and the difficulties are not even beginning when they leave, because actually you we so reduce the chances of them getting on to their, you know, reducing crime, getting back to jobs, getting back with their families. It's it's a no-brainer. We should be looking at a much reduced prison population. So um, your, your proposal seems to uh, benefit the community, rehabilitate, rehabilitate the prisoners and engage uh, the victims. Would they, would they also save money as well, do you think? Absolutely save money. And, and we launched the campaign three years ago on the, on the, on the, in the background of having done an economic analysis. Um, at the moment, clearly, prison is expensive, particularly for short sentences, but they are, it is expensive. And at the moment, we don't even really know the true cost of prison because, uh, you know, the cost that's banded around is sort of 40000 a year. But depending on whether you're a young person, a young woman, it can vary hugely in terms of that particular figure, we looked at a whole series of what I would call pretty intensive community sentences. And they range from about three to 5,000 a year compared to 40,000 a year to lock somebody up. So yeah, we shouldn't be thinking that community centers is a cheap, cheap option, but it is a lot less expensive than prison. Okay, I think that was, that was great actually, yeah, thanks, thanks Roma. Um, Really appreciate um, taking the time out to uh, do this interview. Um, I will be in contact soon, if that's all right, about um, fine, next steps and everything. Got a few more to do and um, still got one or two waiting on articles to come in as well. So I'll, I'll keep you updated with where we are, but we're nearly, 